today we're talking about CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation for babies. So the aim of what we're doing with CPR is it's not about bringing somebody back to life. A lot of people believe that you've got a heart that should be beating like this that either stops or flutters around ineffectively or just isn't doing its job and that you need to come along and that you need to start compressing the chest and therefore the heart to get the heart going on its own again. That's actually really unlikely to happen. The aim of what you are actually doing is simply to be pressing on the chest to keep the blood circulating around the body, to keep the brain really well supplied with blood and therefore oxygen. Because if our brain lacks blood and therefore oxygen, we can become brain damaged or we die. It's not about fixing the cause of what's gone wrong. That's up to the doctors, the nurses, the paramedics to fix that. Your job is simply to get that blood circulating around the body to keep the brain really well supplied with blood. So that if the cause can be fixed, then you've given that baby the best chance possible at a good outcome. So the way that we do this, doctors A, B, C. D for danger. R for response, S for sending for help, A for airway, B for breathing, and C for compressions. Now, D for danger. What we want to know is we don't want to get hurt when we try to help our child. It's very important that you check for danger to make sure that they are free from danger and you as well, because if you're hurt, you can't help them. Once we know that we're free from danger, we need to check for response. Pick a baby up, hold them upright in your arms and give them a really good tickle. Annie, Annie, open your eyes Annie, open your eyes. And hopefully Annie is giving us a nice big cry. If she can cry, she doesn't need CPR. So we're checking for response to see if they are conscious or unconscious. If they are unconscious, we are moving on to the next step. And the next step is sending for help. We can call triple zero from our mobile phone. You can call triple zero from a landline. You're going to ask for ambulance and calmly and clearly, you're going to tell them where you are and what is wrong. Sometimes calling for help, the fastest way may not be calling yourself. If there's somebody else there with you, get them to call the ambulance. Scream out to the neighbours, flag down a car, do whatever you need to do to get help quickly, but don't delay starting CPR. So once we've sent for help, the next thing we're doing is we're opening up Annie's airway. Now your airway is your windpipe, your trachea, basically the tube that goes from your nose and mouth down into your lungs and that needs to be open. If it's blocked or kinked then we can't breathe and if we can't breathe we don't live. It's that simple. So in Annie what we're going to do we're going to put her on the floor because we need a nice firm surface underneath her. If we have her on the couch or on a bed and we go to do compressions then we're just going to bounce her. We're not going to get that good compression depth. She needs to be on a nice firm surface. So we're going to put her on the floor. And babies, when they become unconscious, become very heavy and floppy. So what happens is, is their heads will flop down and block their airway. We need to come along and open that up. So what we're going to do, we're going to very gently pull their head back into a lovely straight or neutral position. With our other hand, we're going to hold them on that hard part of the chin right here and lift that towards the ceiling. This is called a head tilt and chin lift. We're not tipping their head back. We're not letting their head go forward because that will block off their very small and soft airways. We need to keep them in that lovely straight neutral position. When we lift their chin towards the ceiling, what we're doing is we're pulling their chin forward to pull their tongue forward to unblock the entrance to the airway. 
And if while we're doing this, we notice that they have vomit or that little piece of Lego or whatever it is in their mouth, we're going to roll them on their side and get that out. Now, we're not doing any big blind finger sweeps where we stick our fingers in there and try and dig out whatever it is because we'll end up pushing whatever it is further down. What we need to do is if it's vomit, let it drain out. If it is that little piece of Lego and you can easily get it out, do it. But we're not doing any big finger sweeps because we will end up pushing an object further down. So once that's done, roll them back over. You need to keep holding their airway because if you let go, they're just going to flop back down again. So while you keep holding their airway open, we're going to move on to the next step. And the next step is checking for breathing. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to look, listen and feel. Now babies are abdominal breathers. They breathe with their tummies. So we're not looking up here on the chest. We're looking around here for rise and fall of the tummy. We are listening for air coming out of their nose and mouth and we're feeling with our cheek for air coming out of their nose and mouth. And the other thing that we're looking for in babies is their colour. After even just 20 seconds or so of ineffective breathing, a baby will turn blue. And this is one of the main indicators in conjunction with other things that a baby will need CPR. So what we're looking for. While we're keeping that open, we're looking for rise and fall, we're listening and we're feeling with our cheek. And while we're holding the airway open, if we find that they are breathing normally, so they are unconscious but breathing normally, we're going to roll them into what we call the recovery position on their side because we never ever leave somebody who is unconscious on their back in case they vomit. On a young baby, pick them up. You can hold them in what we call, you know, the football position or tiger in a tree, whatever you want to call it. And the aim of what we're doing is we can hold their airway in that lovely straight position. Their tongue and jaw comes forward, I'm blocking the airway. If they vomit, it comes out. We can feel their breathing on our arm and we can keep them nice and close so we can watch them and see their colour. Now, once your baby becomes too heavy for you to be able to do this, and that may be even as little as five or six kilos, you need to put them on the ground. Roll them on their side and you may need to be holding open their airway. And the aim of this is if they vomit, it's going to come straight out and they're not actually going to choke on their vomit. However, if we find when we're holding open their airway and we're looking, listening and feeling that there is either an occasional little gasp or no breathing at all, so little or no breathing. If we find that they are blue, we can't feel any air coming out, then what we need to do is start compressions. So our criteria for starting compressions are little or no breathing, unconscious, blue, in a baby, we are starting compressions. We're not feeling for a pulse because it's not about a heart that's stopped, it's simply about a heart that's ineffective. These three things need to be in conjunction. Unconscious, little or no breathing, blue, we're starting compressions. So, whereabouts do we do our compressions? You need to be on the lower half of the sternum or breastbone. So how do you find that in a baby? Get their clothes off. Open it up so we can see this part of their chest. Place your fingers on their nipples. Trace that into the middle over that hard sternum and that's called the nipple line. If you simply place two fingers or two thumbs just below the nipple line, that's the correct position. And how deep do we go? We need to go down one third of the depth of the chest. That's the depth we need to go down one third of that. And how fast do we go? 100 compressions per minute. And there's some good cheats, so the rhythm of Nelly the Elephant or Baba Black Sheep or even Staying Alive by the Bee Gees is the correct rhythm 
for compressions. So, go deeper than you think. You're not going to break them. It is better to do hard and fast compressions than not doing anything at all. Now, we need to add some breathing in there as well. We want to do 30 compressions to two breaths. And when we do breaths on a baby, we're going to put our mouth over their mouth and nose. We need to make sure that we've opened up their airway because if the airway is blocked, we're not going to get any air in. And think about the size of their lungs in comparison to ours. A newborn's lungs may be this big. All we need is the contents of our cheeks. That's it. So, we're going to do 30 compressions to two breaths and our breaths will look like this. Open up the airway. Breathe. Breathe and straight back into your compressions. So, from the beginning, we check for danger to make sure we're not going to get hurt and that they are safe. There's no danger, we move on to response. So we pick up Annie. Annie, Annie, open your eyes Annie, open your eyes. Annie's completely unconscious, she's not responding to us. We move on to the next step, sending for help. We can scream out to the neighbours, send somebody else or we can dial triple zero from our mobile phone or a landline. So we're sent for help. We are going to put Annie on the floor and we're going to open up her airway into that lovely straight or neutral position. If there's vomit or anything in her airway, we can let that drain out and then back over. We are then going to look, listen and feel. Looking for rise and fall of the chest or the tummy, listening for air coming out and feeling with our cheek. And I actually can see very little breathing at all. She is unconscious and she is blue, so we are starting compressions. 30 to 2. Lower half of the sternum, one third of the depth of the chest, and the rate of 100 compressions per minute. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Open up the airway, place your mouth over their mouth and nose and breathe. Straight back in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Open up the airway. Breathe. Breathe. Straight back in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And you continue until help arrives and takes over. So that most likely is paramedics arriving and taking over CPR. Until you become too physically exhausted to keep going or until the baby starts to respond. And if they do start to respond to you, you stop your CPR and roll them on their side into the recovery position. Make sure help is coming and watch them very, very carefully. Thank you.